All right, so let's see some uses of these conditional probabilities in section 5.3. Um, so we're going to introduce this new thing called independence, statistical independence. Um, and A and B are independent of each other. B is independent of A. If the probability of B given A is the same as the probability of B. Essentially, the fact that A has happened um, doesn't affect whether the other one will happen. So basically, A has no effect on B. So independent means essentially no effect. And then, um, so no effect or no association is independent. Otherwise, if they have some sort of effect or association, we call them dependent. And that means those probabilities are not equal to each other. So by the probability changing, there's some sort of effect. So let's look at an example. Um, we have a study investigated the association between mother's smoking status and low birth weights. And so we might know already that these have some sort of effect on each other. So because there is an effect, um, I think we'll probably show that they are dependent. But let's see how it works um, statistically. So I want us to just understand the idea of this effect versus no effect so we can kind of guess the answer before we start doing the statistics. Um, but I do think there's an effect between smoking and low birth weight. So let's see how we prove that statistically. So if we want to prove um, if smoking and low birth weight are independent or dependent, we're going to do the, pro ah, the probability of smoking given low birth weight Actually, let's do the other direction because we're actually more interested in the probability of a low birth weight, right? What's the chance the baby has a low birth weight? Uh, if the mother smokes. And then what we're going to do is compare it just to the probability of a low birth weight overall. So I did this order because it makes more sense logically, but you technically could switch the order. Um, and so by switching the order, it would be smoke given low birth compared to probability of smoking. But just in everyday language, that's a little confusing. Um, so what I'm doing here is what's the chance that a baby has a low birth weight versus what's the probability that a baby has a low birth weight if the mom's a smoker. So let's do one at a time. Um, let's do low birth weight given smoker. So given smoker means we're going to look at the smoker column, since smoker is a column. And we're just going to go ahead and do low birth weight out of all the smokers. So it'll be 30 out of 74. All right, my total is smokers only. So we get, so out of people who, women who smoke, pregnant women who smoke, 40%.4054 had a low birth weight. So then what's low birth weight overall? That's what we want to compare this to. Is this a high percent or a low percent, right? Maybe 40% of babies are a low birth weight to begin with. So now we're just going to look at all of um, the study. And then how many of them had a low birth weight? 59 out of 189 had a low birth rate weight, regardless of smoking status. So we're going to do 59 out of 189, and only 30% have a low birth weight. So basically what this is saying is 31.22% of babies have a low birth weight, at least in this study, versus it's higher for smokers, 40.54% of babies of smokers have low birth weight, which means there is an effect, right? If there was no effect, these numbers should be the same. So because there's an effect, because these numbers are not equal, they are not independent, which means they are dependent. There's some sort of relationship. Does 
So the independent would mean it's 40% either way or 30% either way, right? The fact that they're smoking does not change the birth weight. All right, I'll see you back. Well, there's one more example we'll do in the next video.